if a camera can shoot photos at 24 frames per second or 24 photos every second or 30 photos every second, or in the case of the R6 Mark II, 40 photos per second? Then why would you ever need to shoot in photo mode? Like why should you not just shoot in a continuous video mode where you can do 120 frames per second? Well, there's actually some technical reasons why. And if you are someone who needs video, you should shoot a video. But if you're someone who is doing photo and has considered maybe shooting in video instead and just grabbing some still frames from your video, there are three good reasons why if you need photos, shoot for photos. But if you need for videos, you know, shoot for videos too. They're just, there's, there are some differences. So the first is bit depth. Now bit depth is the amount of information that's contained within a file. In the case of video on the R6 or the R5, that is 10 bits of data. For some cameras, that's gonna be eight bit, but for video, it's either eight or 10. Or in the case of raw video, which is most cameras don't shoot in raw, like the, the R5 over here can shoot raw, but that's kind of the exception. Raw video contains a little bit more information, but when you compare that, to raw photos, raw photos are 12 and 14 bits, or some cases it's it's even more bits. bits. Bits and bytes, now all of a sudden I want bits and bytes. But what that all works out to is more information per pixel. For photos, you have more bit depth, or what results in more dynamic range, so that you can pull up the shadows and drag down the highlights so that it looks like there's more in your photo. There's more dynamic range, there's more of an image, there's more for you to play with. How many times am I gonna say more? A lot more. Now the second reason is frame rates. When you're shooting on video, you're supposed to use the 180 degree rule, which says take your frame rate, now this video is being shot at 24 frames per second, I think, yes it is, and I'm taking that and doubling it by two. So I'm getting one over 48, or we round that to, uh, to one over 50, so that my shutter speed matches so that it looks natural in my video. Like if I go like this, you can see there's a little bit of motion blur in my hand. If, and if I try to grab a still from any point in that video, it's not gonna be sharp. So if you were shooting a subject that was running by really fast, like, like a car or someone swinging a bat or someone running, then it wouldn't be sharp and you, you really wouldn't have a photo that's usable. For a situation like that, you'd wanna shoot at one over 500 or one over 1,000 or something that's fast enough that you can freeze your motion and see your subject nice and sharp. For most photography, we like to take the rule of take your focal length and double it by two. So in the case of this, you know, if I was shooting at 200 millimeters, I would wanna shoot at one over 400, just as a starting point. But for video, that goes out the window, we just take our frame rate and we multiply it by two. Now the last reason that you wanna shoot photo as photo and video as video is rolling shutter. And it's probably a term you've not heard before because it's not too common with photography. And that's because camera lenses, we got dust, why do we have dust? That's because cameras have mechanical shutters. This is the sensor, I think you can see it. Hold on, maybe we gotta get some light in there. Can you see it? Okay, there we go. That's the sensor, I wanna turn the camera off There's the shutter. And most dedicated video cameras don't have a shutter, at least not in the way that these photo cameras do. Now what the shutter does is it allows, it allows you to get a nice even readout of the sensor so that you can avoid warping objects in your photo. So that if you know a ball or a bat or a really fast moving object is in your frame, what will happen with a sensor is that if you don't have a mechanical shutter, you can get this rolling shutter or this trapezoidal, trapezoidal diagonal effect where things can look a little bit sideways or a little bit slanted. And it's kind of hard to explain without taking your camera and actually like going like this to see what the effect of the rolling shutter is. But this is because sensors have a limited speed at which they can read out. Now, if you go back to those kind of line scan cathode ray tube television, 
engines that we used to have, basically the way those would work is that they would display one line at a time. And there was a refresh rate that if you kind of caught it in between the refresh rate, you would get this weird looking image. And the same thing is true for a camera sensor. It kind of reads out the information line by line, and it can only do that so fast. Some cameras like the R5 are a lot faster than the camera like the R6. And so that's why you pay a lot more money for something like the R5. But the sensor readout is what causes rolling shutter, which would mean that if you're trying to take stills from a video, you might not be able to get them depending on what you're trying to shoot. So by all means, if you wanna take still photos from your video files because you're shooting on a, a red camera or something that's really high end, go ahead, do that. But for most cases, take a photo when you need to take a photo and take video when you need to take a video. If you found this helpful, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more like this. And until the next one, peace.